Keshi. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yes. My name is Sam Kibara. <laughs> I fear that name. I, I, I told First Service that uh, um, I'm, I'm happier with Teacher Kibara. <laughs> uh, just to run away from uh, Pastor Kibara. But anyway, um, we are here. It's my first time to actually stand before Mabuno downtown. So I was trying to gather myself and make sure that I am compliant. So I wore a jacket, and I'm the only one wearing a jacket. <laughs> so um, I was, and, and I was told to talk about a topic that is very, what were MDT? So I even carried a, a business diary. <laughs> I was told those guys don't, don't, don't just buy newspapers that are colorless. <laughs> they are colorful and all that. So my name is Sam Kibara. Um, I am born again, and I love God, um, and, and I'm honored to be here to bring the word uh, uh, here. Um, I've been a member of uh, Mabuno since Mabuno started, so, oh, yeah, um, yes, uh, <laughs> I'm a member of the National Board um, uh, of Mabuno, uh, so I'm privileged to serve with, um, with the, uh, Pastor M and uh, Pastor Kevin, and I honor them for um, just being uh, there in my life and allowing me to come and minister. I'm also a husband. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm one husband to one wife, uh, Beatrice. Beatrice, you can wave. Yeah. And between us, we have two teenage daughters, um, and we are happy. Actually, our main area is parenting, Joanne. Yes, um, so we were privileged also to read the first layer, um, a, a cohort of, of this year. Um, and I'm also passionate about family finance and just, you know, economic empowerment and all that. So, yes, we are here. And I'm happy that, uh, um, you know, uh, I'll be standing before you to talk about many, many things. Now, about seven years ago, uh, we were privileged to host a group of couples. There were about five couples, and they had come to us um, just for financial. They said when they were looking at us, we looked like we knew something about money. <laughs> so they came, uh, we hosted them, and one of those couples actually was Pastor Kevin and Faith Hironzi. So I, I suspect that the reason I'm here <laughs> is perhaps because I said something intelligent. But anyway, let's get on to the sermon. Allow uh, me to pray so that we can get into God's word. Father God, we thank you. We thank you because you're faithful. We thank you because you're sovereign. We thank you because you are so faithful, gracious, and compassionate. We thank you because you have enabled us to see this Sunday. As we, I stand before your people, I pray, Father, that you bring forth your word through me in the way that you would want it delivered. And Father, we pray that it will uh, find a good space for it to germinate and to grow into something else. For indeed, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, because we are in Mavuno, you always turn to your neighbor, don't you? So the question of the day is, what is the thing that tells you that someone is financially successful? Akona kakitu. Ebu discuss with your neighbor. What, what tells you? Hey, you are kosawa. Akosawa. Yani, yeye na soft life wako pamoja. You know? Yeah? Nini? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we need to go back to the sermon. Uh, Marisa, Marisa, uh, you, you need to finish. I need to go on. Otherwise, I won't be given another opportunity to preach. <laughs> All right. All right. So, what did your neighbor tell you? Ninini? 
Ebu, Ebu, Ebu just tell me, what do your neighbor say? What is that thing that makes you know that someone is financially akosawa? Um, she said that if someone leaves employment and their lifestyle does not change. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. Unawacha, employment and life goes on. Yes? Uh, we, my neighbor said a uh, t-shirt, yes. like the one that Bill Gates wears. Unajoy na kwanga, chini ya maji, na ili ya Zuckerberg. Yes, yes, so it's a t-shirt. <laughs> and yeah, even the way you're wearing is like Zuckerberg. So, uh, <laughs> uh, one more. Uh, I think the, the people who say, no kukari ya mani. So, anyway, I know we have many things we can say. <laughs> But more often than it is, it's about, I mean, the way they can do what they want, when they want, how they want, where they want, without caring what is the price tag. Isn't it? Yeah. As in, when they go to the restaurant and the menu is brought, how do they read the menu? They don't look at the price. Do they read from? Left to the right, <laughs> or right to the left. <laughs> so, <laughs> whichever it is, you know, <laughs> uh, when you're doing life, you, you are quickly trying to make sure that your life transforms from reading your menu from left. to right. so that you're like, uh, today I feel like a grilled steak. Hey. Hey. You know, like a salmon. You know? Yeah. <laughs> It's that food, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing. So we have been going through um, a series titled When the Going Gets Tough. And we are really just talking about the financial principles um, that will help us to thrive in times that are uncertain, such as today. And we are just going through some kingdom principles that are aligned to what God would want us to, um, uh, how God would want us to live, even in our financial lives. Because our worship of God includes our finances. Come on. Our worship of God includes. So you can say, me, I go to church, I do everything. Rakini, uku. Noko geriamani. So. So the first week we looked at the ownership principle. And this ownership principle is basically getting to acknowledge who is the true owner. How do you see it? As I, I, I use money, as I get money, as money comes to me, as I do business, as I do employment, who owns the money? And acknowledging that sets a pace on how you use it. Because God Owns, we manage. And the second week, last week, we looked at the entrepreneurship principle. And Pastor Kironzi told us very well that we are created to be creators. Right? And that when we are doing business, when you're looking for things to do, that we should do more of not looking for jobs, but doing what? Looking for problems to solve. And when we look for problems to solve, we'll never get it wrong. Because once we solve the problem, the people are ready to pay. And so today, we are on to the third kingdom principle. And this kingdom principle that we are looking at today is the retention principle. And this retention principle, we also sometimes call it the ant principle. I'll tell you about the ant. And throughout this whole series, we are borrowing from a scripture in one of the Gospels, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, starting from verses 11 through to 27. And we'll be able to read this together, and we'll be able to see what God is continuing to tell us about kingdom principles. And so, I'll read this and this conversation was happening somewhere in Jericho. Where? Have you been there? 
But today we are where? We are not in Jericho. We are in MDT. Okay? And so when I read this scripture, I'll do something to make it, you know, MDT. So I'll read and I'll, you know, we'll put it into context. And I hope you walk with me in this conversation. Yes. Good. I can see there was still some remainder from Keshi and the crowd she paid. And it's, so uh, uh, get on. So let's start with um, verse 11. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Now, <laughs> have you asked yourself what were they listening to? Because our passage started from while they were to this. So it is important for you to, so that you get the context. Now, the story before this, or the story of Zacchaeus, or Zacchaeus, you know, wherever you went to Sunday school. We call it, in, in Mavuno, we call it this, this, the what? Mavuno kids, you know, those kind of things. But anyway, the story of Zacchaeus. You remember, he, you know, it was in Jericho, you know, uh, Jesus was coming to Jericho, and, um, you know, it was a big thing, you know, he's coming to town, and this guy was charged from a hate perspective, so uh, he decided, you know what, um, I need to do something about this situation, and I'll climb a tree so that I can see everything from a bird's eye view. And the Bible also tells us that this guy was not one of the best guys, he was a tax collector, so guys are like, ah. Oh. You know, that kind of thing, you know. So, Annie, it's like, you know, like today, if you hear guys are from KRA with all these housing tax, what else is there new? Fiji what? Uh, bicycle tax, you know, what tax? You know, we don't know what, what next is, is, is a tax. So, you're like, Nini, what? Nini. So, these guys said, you know, it's even better I be on top of a tree because now I'll not need to deal with these guys who are always uh, reminding me. So, then Jesus comes. And he comes just at the tree, and he looks up and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to spend my night in your house. And they're like, ah, who are you? Nini, who are you? 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 You know, that's the conversation, you know. But then... He comes in and, um, you know, Zacchaeus uh, repents and gives his life to, uh, to, to, to God and everything. So that's what was happening. But I also need to give you a second background on the gospel. You see, when we talk about the gospel, we talk about four books. We talk about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when we look at the stories in those four books, some of them look like it's a repetition. And so sometimes we wonder, so why would we have four books talking about the same parable? Kwani? Kwani stories requires Meisha. But the thing is this. The thing is this. Each of the four books has a different perspective. So St. Luke was coming from a perspective where, yes, the Israelites have actually understood this story literally. They have actually had and they have understood. But now, there was a problem because it was literal. You know, when they are told that uh, the, the kingdom of God will come, then they are like, Tugoja atakujia mlangoi, ama mlangoi. You know, them, they are not thinking outside. So, St. Luke was doing a big thing of trying to tell these guys that the kingdom of God is different and trying to really align them to what the kingdom of God is. So at this point in verse 11, when they were still listening to this, as in these guys, there is a captive audience like the way we have now. You know this is a captive audience. Because you look at your church. Now you have to listen to me, some kibara, a guy you don't know. Okay, I usually sit over there when I'm not preaching. So now you are a captive crowd. So this story, we are listening to Zac Zacchaeus talking about, oh, if I have ever wronged anybody, I'm sorry, all those things. Then now, St. Luke takes this advantage of this and says, while they were still reading, uh, uh, listening to this, he went on to give a parable. 
Now, the parable that he goes on to give, he says, because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth. Now, let me also bring some context. Leo utasikiza context mpaka ukitoka hapa ni context too. Anyway, in that time, the Romans were ruling over the Jewish. And what, how they would do it, they would actually get local kings to actually be elevated to rule, but under the instruction of the Romans. For them to be kings, they would have to travel to Rome and then be uh, under the emperor, and then they would come back now as enthroned kings. So this thing was known among the Jews, that they would actually travel, you travel as an ordinary noble man, but then when you come back, you'll come back as a king. So this story is based on that kind of a context. They know that whenever maybe a king dies and we need to elevate another one, there will be a time when they need to go all the way to Rome, and when they come back, they'll come back enthroned as a king. So that's the story. So he says, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Now, at that point, we don't understand what this is. So we can say, Waritewa Burungo. Ama Wariwashiwa Burungo. You know, any ten minas, whatever they are, ten potatoes, ten whatever. You know. So under the metrics of the Bible, mina is like you know, it's, in fact, there is a mina, which is the weight, which is about half a kg. And there is mina, that is money. So, it goes on to say here, put this money to work. So, that's when we realize, kumbe, this mina is? And it's supposed to be like three months worth of wages. So, you are salary times three. So, umewachua. moja. So at this point in the scripture, it does not tell us whether each was given one. But we know there were 10 minas and there were 10 servants. Now, what happens, mumeenda maari, mumepewa na mukoengi, what do you do? See everyone with their own opinion, isn't it? I, Mimi, I, I, ni, ni, so we suspect that's what happened here. And each person got their own one mina. Are we together? I'll tell you why my divine imagination is taking me there. But let's like, follow with me. Yes. But, so put this money to work until, he said, until I come back. Then in 14 he says, but the subjects hated him. You know, yani lazima kuwe na watu. You know, my haters, yani uko utu na waitaka watiaji. You know, yani, yani, ala seba, ah, ujamana, anahena kuwa king wetu. Ayi, apana, apana, iya tuwezi kubali. Ayi, kama, kama, or this, or this. Si tufanya kitu. So, they came up with a kapran, and the kapran is here. Yeah, the kapran is here. Um, you know, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. Hey, hey, boss. Ah. So, you know, I don't know when you're going to be made king. You know, you know, you know, you know, 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 See you ni kama ah anafanya nini huku si alikuwa si alikuwa pada ile gida ya okoa ni nini anafanya nini huko ah huku sikia nini ah au ni unajua walijipanga sijui wakasema nini ati huku win so wako hapa wanajaribu nini sijui ah sawa tuta deal na wao wewe tu goja wewe wewe tulia 
Now, bado tuko kwa Bible. We don't want this man to be our king. So in 15, he was made king, however, and returned home. Your story, I could work. So, sasa ni kubaya. Things are not good. Tulienda mpaka Rome. Na uyu mtu lika alituona. Uyu lika alituona. Eee, hey, namikiri alituona. Yuku alikuwa tuwa na agaria hiyo saidi. Ana alituona mahali tulikuwa tumeka. Ah. We want to hope to have a na marivedi, ani. So you, you can see that story. You can see that story. What we are going to do? Eh, we are going to Jericho. Eh, anyway. So then he sent. Once he got home, he sent for the servants to whom he had he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. In verse 16, the first one. You are going to go the first one came and said, Sir, Papa Kiro, you are Mina. Sasa hapa, this is where we learn that they each took one because it's you are Mina. Not your minas. You see, Burundo ilikuwa pamoja. Sasa waluto anisha. Kila mtu wakashikuwa nini yake? Mina. So your mina is here. So your mina, enye nilipata, has earned ten more. Sio nika hakuna mtu wananifikia. Awa, hakuna. Ini kuna ten. Eh. Sema, these are the kind of guys I need. Well done, servant. Well done. He just needs a bit of praise. Well done. Maripo. The master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. Ah! Kwani hii kitu hii katani bob kumbe ilikuwa na maneno. Yani mutu wana metawa tu, wameleta tu, wa hundred bob, wamepewa ten cities. Ayi. Nisawa. Sama, hey, kani hivo. The second one came, verse 18. And said, sir, you are mina. One. Is it ready? You are mina has earned five more. Ah. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. Anybody else? Ah, wachana na avi bere bere, vi here here. Number two. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I kept it and read it in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you. Oh, nakujua. Nakujua. Wewe, you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and leave where you did not sow. Kujua sada. Usi, ah, wachana da avi, bere bere. Uwe na kujua. You are a hard man. Una tufingiria. <laughs> the master replied, I will judge you by your own words. You wicked servant. You knew. Did you? That I'm a hard man. Taking out what I did put in. I did not put in. And leaping what I did not sow. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I come back, I can correct it with interest? Bona? Bona ikaka. In the current account. See how you can do saving. By the way, some statistics to Rudy. Zima to talk a Jericho to Kuja downtown. This week, the Central Bank of Kenya released the report. And the, in the report, it stated that only 1.871 million accounts have over 100,000. Now, that's just a figure, 1.8 million. This is only 2.5% of all accounts in all financial institutions. 
all financial institutions have 67 point something million accounts. So this is 2.5 million. Now to put this into context, yani ika account has retained ka average year 100 minimum. This 1.871 includes accounts for businesses and institutions. Yes. Retirement benefits. 82% of Kenyans do not have any saving scheme. Only 18% have some form of saving. Sasa, to mesoma about 10 servants and 10. Sasa, it means these 82%. And you see, we are Kenyans, aren't we? Is Mavuno downtown in Kenya? So we are representative. So 82% of the crowd looking at me right now. There is a possibility. Yes. With some level of certainty. <laughs> that they are not in any active saving scheme. Verse 22, his master replied. <laughs> I'll judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. Now you see, when you keep money in a current account, now do you see the names that follow you? You wicked servants. So Mimi, imagine. <laughs> Bible. You knew that I'm a hard man, but you did something. Then he said to those studying, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten. Aye. Sir, you've made a mistake. Verse 25. He already has 10. Kuna shida hapa. Uyu wako na kumi, tiari. So why are you adding him one? Eh. Yeah. In mathematics, I had. So, both check this out. It's not fair. See the entitlement? He replied, I tell you. To everyone who has, more will be given. But for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Ouch. But these enemies of mine, who did not want me to be king over them. Now, let's go back to the ten. Unajua tu meogerea watatu. Ah, saba walikuwa wapi. I, my divine imagination is telling me out of those seven, kuna wengine wali join ika group in the room. Unawala zeba, hata hii mina ni anidi, hata rudi, ututaeda mbaka uko room, hata kuwa king. Sasa hame kuwa king. They are the ones who are being called here. Bring them. You know, they were wishing the Kalivaj would not come. Bring them here and kill them in front of me. Ha, have we arrived in Jericho? You know, I, all this time I was trying to get you to Jericho. So that you do not, we don't live here with the imagination of, I don't even understand what those minas, you know. No, now you know. We understand our thing. So, seven servants, it is possible that they actually were doing their own thing. That they actually went and squandered what they were given. That mina. See, that asasa hii ni nini ayutupea? Tuende tukaji rudishie shukurani. No wata hii pesa ni yetu. Nisinia tax yetu. Eh, wata tu, you know. You know that attitude. We are from MDT. We know. We know. We know this thing. So, those enemies, 
So here's one thing we learned from this passage. We learned that how we deal with money is a spiritual issue and it's important to God. That's what we learn. And we also learn that how we spend and how our money story is going is an indicator of our spiritual standing. Where are we? As in, if I look at all your to receipts, the bill of is akina Java, CJs, Kempinski, Unawaskia, what was MDT? Yeah, you know, those are, uh, that, that, that's my hood. You know, that's, that's how we operate. If we look at you, how your salary got spent, even your spiritual life, yako, yako. See the way you appear in morning prayers for 30, mimi nafikiri nafikaga huko for 25 hata paspa kiroa naweza kuambia ananipataga huko. Eh nafanya ma prayer wa kwa kwa screen. Unajua? As how spiritual I am. Hapana. Leta receipts. Leta receipts itatuambia spiritual imefika wapi. Are we together? Bado tuko pamoja ama tumekanyaga vidole. Anyway. Matthew 6.21 says, where your treasure is, your heart will also be. And in 6.24 says, you cannot serve two masters. You either have to serve one and despise the other. So, you cannot serve money, God or money. It is the only place in scripture that God calls anything or anyone else a master. Because he is a master. Why? Because money has power. Money is the only one thing that has power that are very close to God. Why? When you have money, you almost don't need God. You can do what you want when you want. Your money works for you. When you don't have money, when you are broke, you are very spiritual. <laughs> I am praying that God will help me to afford evening food. Everything is a prayer item. Are we together? So, Papa Kiro told us that uh, some of you are looking very spiritual because of uh, brokenness. Pesa ikigia. You know, tutakuwa tunakuwa gari, tutakuwa, ah! Nuewe? I like the way they, 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 they touch over here, you know. And we know you are from Bokoroini, you know. <laughs> we know you heard about a massage in Nairobi. And you know you are telling me about the Irad and a massage. I don't know, I have, to go, I have to do two trips, you know, uh, uh, just, just so that my back can be aligned, you know. And appetites. Who will not have appetites again at the juice in the talk of Abi? Have you heard about gold coffee? At Kempinski? I'm a Amjafika Apo. Munayaka Apo. Munayaka Apo. We are still on the Bible. You see, there's something we call the consumer culture. Consumer culture is everything, and I have nothing to do, uh, nothing against marketers. It's screaming to you. There is something you, are, you know, shouting to you, please get me. From now, please, me, now. Yes, and when you get it, then you're like, by the way, why did I? Oh no, you know, we are going for. <laughs> the other week I was invited for something. Was it white quarter? No, not white. There is black tie or white tie. My friend, I googled. What is a white tie? You are talking about something called a tuxedo and the gloves. Where is my sasa? This tuxedo, it's a happy turn. Now, now my poverty mentality is talking to me. That's a tuxedo. Ni wapi tena nitaitwa hii white tie. And you can tell how that conversation went. You know, I you no, know, I don't even know where to end. You know, as a problem. But consumer mentality is the worst thing. You know, the worst thing is that even Christians are beginning to spiritualize consumerism. Yes. We're going to say we are living by faith. 
We are the children of the king. We must re live like who? The princess. Yeah. I'm a daughter of Sikeshia Parisema, a daughter of the king. I must live like a king's daughter. I earn 30,000. I live in a house of 60,000. I'm a king's daughter. That is not living by faith. There is something the Bible calls that thing. They said it. The ones he said in front here. Me, in fact, the, I like the way they, they put it in the Kiswahili Bible. Upubavu. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, your it's actually in the Bible. For real. For real. For real. For real. It's, it's there. So this mentality, and I, I don't mean to offend anyone, uh, is... You know, this kind of thinking, this kind of living will actually leave you as a God's enemy because you will be nothing remaining in your minas. You will not have, you will be among the seven who do, I, nini hapo si edi, naenda kusema ili edi hapi. Ata sina, ata ile nilipewa sina. Wajua at least who you are, who nayo. Ni vile tu aliweka current account hakuiweka wapi saving at least alikuwa nayo na bado aliapiwa wewe you wicked sasa mimi eh, sasa mimi nitaitwa nini dio hao wakaitwa hao oh, haku anataka niwe king walete hapa bere katakata kichwa 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 bado we are on the bible in case you thought we went out of the bible so when we talk about the retention principle is that we must retain a portion of what we are earning. It's godly. And that's why we talk about the ants principle. When we look at Proverbs um, uh, uh, chapter uh, 6, verse 6 to 8, there is a story of the ant. Ant in Swahili is called chungu. Nikakituka dogo, kamuchwa, si unakajua. Now, Again, context. Abu say my context. I have no idea why the Bible decided to. Yani apo tu tu metu kano rakini. Siju kwa nini? Are you seeing the way that verse is starting? Go to the aunt you who. Sasa dini tu mefanya nini tu meitu asragadzi? Yani nini? Nini tu mefanya? So it seems like there is a story that was going on there before, and that story is very similar to the one of the minas. Yani ni kama watu wamekuja, yani ile pesa nilikupea last week, imenda wapi? Hai, imam, si nimemariza, si, si hiyo imeisha, ati likuwa kidogo. So, uh -huh. go to the aunt you. Consider its ways and be wise. Why? Because, the ant, in verse 7, it has no commander, it has no overseer, it has even no ruler. Yet, in verse 8, it stores provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. is simply because we are living a life where we are not putting anything aside. And we are saying, so we we listened to a video here from one of us. Yani the person in the video anakuja kwa hii kanisa. Ebu tusikize. thinking about a question that somebody asked me concerning saving because they were so irritated that I said the minimum you should save is and invest is about 20% minimum 20% of what you earn so this person was like okay Sawa just break down for me a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings what would that look like given the number of obligations I have the taxes I have to pay what does that look like so I've, I've taken that um, question and done a bit of math so with 100,000 shillings, the first thing you'll pay is tax. 
pay pay as you earn and actually when you take the relief and all of that it ends up being a tax of 22,596 225 leaving you with 77,403 and then that's when I think you need to take out your savings which is 20% and 20% of that is 20% of 100,000 is 20,000 shillings. So that, that leaves you with 57,403. All right, so now you have 57,000 from your 100,000. But you've not yet given or tithed. So then we tithe. And the tithe is 10,000 shillings. Yeah, we tithe on gross rate. So then you are left with how much? 47. So I had a wrong figure here. 47,000. 403 and then there's an HIF and SSF in fact I should have taken those out earlier it's about 1,900 shillings so that leaves you with 45,503 so you have 45,503 to then now spend on other things so your other things are transport which maybe you spend 35 if you use public transport if you use a car maybe that's 10,000 a month you know so let's assume you use public transport and so you would spend 3,000 there then your food maybe 8,000 then your rent maybe 18,000 so this helps you to see with 45,000 shillings ideally where should I be living right so that then I, I save on rent I save on transport um, you know buy food from the market your groceries from the market as opposed to from the supermarket where it's slightly more expensive um, and then there's a leg there's water there's your phone bill there's entertainment there's clothing that you need to buy every odd month and so given all those other expenses you actually only have 45,000 out of your 100,000 to spend so it's even when we say 20 percent you it's actually 20 percent of gross yes but these tax and other obligations that you have that are statutory deductions that you can do nothing about that then gives you a picture of how much you should be spending. And the point is, it is possible. The key thing is not to live where we cannot afford. And this is how you actually determine what you can afford. By taking out your saving, taking out your tithe, taking out your rent, I mean, uh, your um, taxes, your tax figures, then you know, okay, this is how much I actually have left to spend. And so therefore I can't pay rent of 50K. Even if I earn 100K, I should be paying rent of less than 20,000 shillings. So that then I have money to do other things with. Hope that makes sense to the person who asked me that question. Um, in fact, I read somewhere that if you want to save meaningfully, you should be saving 30%. So 20% is not that much, um, given where you want to go and ensure that you have a good retirement when you do retire. Uh, I'm reminded of a statement that was made by this, the CEO of the uh, uh, RBA, uh, that's the Retirement Benefits Authority in Kenya. And he said that, where we are right now, 80% of Kenyans are retiring poor. Retiring poor. And it's because we're not saving and investing for our future. So it might be painful now, but it's okay, guys. Let's just make sure that we set ourselves up for a great future ahead. If you have any questions or comments or questions that you'd like me to respond to on using a video or ideas on stuff that you'd like us to cover, please do share and um, I'll do my best to answer them and cover them. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye. That video, that video was shot before the Hasra government. So the Hasra government has increased some taxes. So please, when you watch and you're doing your calculations, please make sure you incorporate them, the enhanced NSSF, the NHIF, the wiki tax, all those good good i can tell you are well informed about where you are at and your context so allow me now to go to my cbc you know cbc is a great thing look at what i came up with i am reminded that there are three things that even as we begin to think about what rina has just told us there are three things i want to bring to our attention and these three things are like the three boxes your entire uh, you know, uh, uh, resources and incomes will all go to these three boxes in one way or another. Where it will either be you'll give it to God, to others, you know, you'll give it yeah, to the government. The government, you don't give it, they grab it. Anyway, <laughs> they, you will either save your resources and you will spend your resources. So, all of us, regardless of the amount, 
we go through this. Now the issue is this. What is your order? Because the order in which these three boxes are determines the quality of your life. So let's start with the first one. Now, I don't know, do people now, you know you are seated opposite me, so does your mind work like this or like this? So that I know how to plan my boxes. Like going this way, good. So, let's start with giving. So I have given. So when my salary comes, when my income comes, I first give. And then, immediately after giving, I say, see, I have given by tithe. See, I have given the people who, who had asked for the need. So I say, Guinness, So you get on. I hope you are seeing the strength of that spending is, is not even the same size as give, isn't it? Anyway, it was not intentional. It's just the, the size of the boxes that were there. But nevertheless, for some reason, spending sometimes seems to be. And then... By the time you, and, and you see these things of spending, we are there, we are saying, you come, grab me, grab me, and it starts even after service. After service, by the time you are done with the stairs, a book to your right. You start there instantly, isn't it? There are things there in you what? I'm ready to be eaten. You know, they are there. If you have not been checking, please check to your right as you live there. So what happens is that this kind of living adds up making you broke. You'll actually be broke. Because by the time now you get onto the spending, you will not get to the third box. There's, yeah, there's too much here, happening here, that you'll not get to this. So that is the first model. The second model, you say, eh, kameingia. Account metigizika. Rudishia muli pore. You know, so you start with by the time you are remembering uh, there are, oh I needed to save. See Rina Risema to save. Akini eh saving Kunavire Papa Kiro Arisema to be masked. Is it supposed to be net or gross? You know, you start arguments. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I I get twenty twenty I I I so you get onto a spiral. You know, you, you don't vaccinate your money. So your money is vulnerable. And the Bible says it. And he says, don't try me in this. It is only in money that again God tells me, test me in this. Marakai, test me in this. And see if. And then he's saying, how are, we, how are we stealing from you? Because you have not been bringing tithes to the house of God. Try me in this and see if I will not open the flood gates. Mpaka your storehouse. Yani, do you know how much can get into your account? Do you know the maximum amount of money a Kenyan account in a bank can hold? Ata how jai fikiria? Sidiyo. Yani how jai fikiria? How much can? Yani account ya good yo jai ni ni ni. You don't you have not. It's even yani you have never even. It's beyond your your horizon. You know. God is saying, you are storehouse. Yani ka account katawekwa ka jaya, yanze kubuagika. So do your homework. Just vaccinate your money. Give what is due. And then the third one is, you say, eh, kuligana na vile kuko ni kubaya. Wacha niweka kakitu. Hata ukia guka, bado tutasave. Kwaza unasave, isn't it? Then after saving, eh, after that, who is needed, even God, you know, you know, give. So even if I don't give, uh, to you know, you know, you start arguing those kind of things. The guys are looking, the kind of cars are out here. Ah, guys must be giving, you know. Ah, even if I don't give mine, ah, me, I'm okay. Who is a holder? 
Eh, hey, atikuwa na na start. Kuna buwa, don't hold. Don't put your, your things where moth and nini can hold. Vaccinate the oil to moth. Isi kuche. Kuma uba. So you are, imagine si juu pesa ili yeda hapi. You have had those kind of conversations. Of course, maybe you could doubt and have another is of it too. Anyway, now, the thing is, what is the ideal? The ideal is, when we receive our money, we first give to God. We do our giving. Because, in fact, I like something that uh, uh, I've been um, uh, serving at Mavuno Mashariki for the longest. Pastor Milton says, let's now pay our tithe and they give our offerings. Tithe are to be? Yani hawobui. Tithe is to be? And he puts it that way so that we understand the level of obligation. So give. Once we have given, then we need to save. Why do we need to save? We need to save because we don't want to be sluggards. We've been told. Don't be sluggard. And this is the only money that belongs to you. When we pay you and within a day or two, you have paid your lad rod or lad ready. You are not paying yourself. Wewe umbepewa pesa na kampuni yenye unafanyia kazi, umeharakishia mwenye pesa. So you are actually a good messenger. very faithful servant, messenger. Because kwani what do we do? Umepewa pesa, unafanya kazi equity. Umepewa pesa na equity. Uu umepelekea mwenye nyuba yenye unaka. Iyo pesa ni yako ama ni ya mwenye nyuba. Lakini nani ya mefanyia kazi? Uu umepewa pesa na equity, upelekea mwenye nyuba ni yake. Si yako. Kama unafikiri ni yako, a boost of rent. <laughs> so, the only money that is yours savings. So next time you are being asked by someone, how much do you earn? What business do you have telling people about the gross salary? How much people do you tell to, telling people about the rent that doesn't belong to you? Siju Izuku doesn't belong to you. It belongs to those guys. Quincy has said to him he wants to, to, to devise those things so that you be paying him. So your pays out at your Quincy. The only money you should be telling people next time when someone asks you, how much do you earn? Is the only money that goes to your circle or the one that is going to a saving that you can say, this is my money. <clears throat> that is the only money here. That's how much you earn. So you save. So once you earn that, then now whatever remains, as Rina has just explained to you very clearly, decide where you live, what you spend, where you go for your coffees, where you meet people, what kind of a car you do, and so on and so forth. So allow me to bring this to a cross with the four things. How, because we have had these things over and over again, but now we want to ask ourselves, how do we ensure that we begin fast, even barest? How do I put aside three to six months of something, my monthly expenses, so that even if I lost a job, Three to six months, I don't have to change my lifestyle. And maybe by God's grace, I'll have gotten something else to do. All I'll have rearranged myself. We need three to six months of some saving. So the first thing is pay yourself first. And we have really dwelt on that. The only thing I want to add is Proverbs 13, 11. This honest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers money retro by retro makes it grow. When you gather money retro by, you make it do what? So it is suggests to us that it is not just about an amount, but it is more to do with the discipline. The second thing, don't live to impress others. Let me tell you. You know we know ourselves. If you, you know you... You know we are human. If you know you get affected by other people's lives, please be coming to service early. Ukikuja <laughs> rate, you know, yani the kind of vehicles that will be parked out here are in such a way 
that even if you are the strongest of faith, we want to say, Enye, iyo nigari. Yani, if, if, if you, when you arrive at the parking, you realize the, 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 the Askaris are looking where you should park because they are, they, are, they are wondering about the cab. Then you know. The other guys will say, Unataka kupaki wapi boss? You know, because your car can even cry but three. You know. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, so, now. <laughs> We were on, we were on, um, don't live to impress others. Don't be, don't, don't just join the Joneses. Do your maths. Do your maths. And Proverbs 13, 20 tells us, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Third, use a budget to track your expenses. You know, don't just do that. Have a budget. Not the one for us or government. Budget for yourself. You know, when people hear budget, they just think it is a government. No. Budget. Live within a plan. Proverbs 27:23 says, be sure you know the condition of your frocks. Give careful attention to your hearts for the riches. Do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. So you're being reminded. Fourth, develop a long-term perspective. That's what we are being told here. And you can see most of us say, let a year you may partake as I. Let a year ten million dollars. Ah, ten million dollars. Did you know happy? Let a. Ata umefanya vibaya kuzema dollars. Ata ikiwa Kenya shiri. Nita chukua iyo. Iyo manena ya kwenda huku juba si juu. Deuteronomy 33, 25 says, The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze, and your strength will equal your days. So there are times when it will be different. Right now we look good, we are working, we have good jobs, income is coming, but it's a season. There are days that will come. And I was giving the example, there are days that will come, we'll be looking at these stairs and say, Kuna jia igine ya kutoka ama ni hitu. Because your bones are not aligned to this kind of a thing. Proverbs 13.22, a good person leaves an inheritance to their children, but sinners' wealth is stored up for the righteous. You see, good people, as we even think about those four things, consumer mentality makes us God's enemy. Because we have nothing. We don't store up anything. We live lives that are paycheck to paycheck. And that's not what God's plan it is for us. God wants us to have margins. Margins are when we actually have more than what we need. This is what we will resort to some ease. And this year we have been talking about ease and acceleration. There's no way we can have. You know, the mistake we do is to assume that the jobs God has given us are actually for spending. God gives us jobs so that we can actually build capital and we use that capital for investment and multiplication. That's what we should do. And so even as we bring this to a close, I'm reminded of Acts 4, 33 to 35, which will even usher us in into the next fourth principle that we'll be talking about um, next week. You know, talking about investments, talking about um, our plans, our forward plans and everything. We're even encouraging you to come with something that represents your forward, what it is you're thinking into the future. Come up with a representation. If you want to build a, 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 a house, come up with the plans. Let's pray for them. And Acts 4.33 says, God, God's grace was so powerful at work in them. So it's God's grace. It is not money. It is not resources. It's God's grace. Was so powerful at work in them that there were no needy persons among them. From the time to time, those who owned land houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it in apostles' feet, and it was distributed to everyone who had need. That's the 
that's the place we want to go. That's a place of, you know, is an acceleration. Even the ones who have, they do not feel the need to hold on to that because they know that once we put it, everyone will have, nobody will have need among us. And that's why we want Mavuno to go to. That's why we want you and me to get to. That we get to a place of ease and acceleration because God's plan is not a plan where we consume everything that we put in our hands. But even as we are talking about the ownership principle, we are talking about God enabling us to understand that we are peace, we are managers. There's nothing we have done to have this, we are just being put in charge. And then entrepreneurship principle, what do I have with what I have? What problems has is God bringing to my attention that I can actually solve using the resources that I have? But if we are consuming everything, then we cannot have anything left to solve any problem. And today we have said that we don't want to become sluggard. We have to put something. We have to retain something. The retention principle. 